Immigration has been a political flashpoint for decades now. It's one of the most complex issues that our nation faces today as we try to grapple with all of the geopolitical, economic and social factors at play. For the last three elections, Donald Trump has make, made villainizing, Im, villainizing immigrants central to his campaign message. His two major promises on immigration are to build a wall and to carry out the largest deportation operation in the history of the country. Now, it comes as no shock that Project 2025's immigration policy also echoes Trump's promises. The far-right manifesto puts forth sealing the border, and it seeks to do so with military force. Let's turn to page 166, page uh, chapter 5. It wants the Department of Defense to, quote, assist in aggressively building the border wall system on America's southern border, including using military personnel and hardware to prevent uh, illegal crossings between ports of entry and channel all cross-border traffic to legal ports of entry. Okay. But Project 2025 goes much, much farther than that. People can agree that you should be able to control your border. But not only does Project 2025 aim to close the border and to militarize the border, it aims to use every lever of government to find, detain, and deport undocumented people, going so far as to take funding and housing away from people who are just associated with undocumented immigrants. Look at this rec uh, recommendation. It's uh, to the Department of Education on page 167. It wants the Department of Education to, quote, deny loan assistance to those who are not U.S. citizens or lawful permanent residents and deny loan access to students at schools that provide in-state tuition to illegal aliens. We don't use that word. That's their language. But let me just tell you, this is crazy. Project 2025 wants to take away student loan eligibility for students with legal status or who might be American citizens who simply attend a school that might confer financial and tuition benefits upon undocumented immigrants. There's more. Project 2025 wants to bar U.S. citizens from qualifying for federal housing if they live with anyone who is not a U.S. citizen or legal permanent resident, specifically calling out mixed status families. It wants to force states to share driver's licenses and taxpayer identification information with federal authorities in order to find undocumented individuals and threaten to revoke critical funding to states that don't comply. It wants to use uh, data from FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency data, to enforce immigration control. I mean, think about that. You're an undocumented immigrant and a hurricane comes your way. You go to FEMA to, to get uh, temporary housing and then you get swept up into, into the federal immigration system. Data that is supposed to be used for major disasters. It wants to bring back child and family detention and increase the national capacity for those detention centers. I could go on, but Project 2025 doesn't just go after undocumented people or illegal immigration. It would actually even severely limit legal immigration, which we know to be an imperative in this country, an economic imperative. It would effectively terminate the legal status of 500,000 dreamers. The percentage of Americans who think dreamers should have legal status in this country is way above 80 percent. But Project 2025 would take status away from dreamers. It would use the existing backlog of cases to suspend most legal immigration. It would limit the number of H-2A and H-2B temporary worker visas. That would cause critical gaps in the agricultural industry, the construction industry, the hospitality sector, and the forestry sector. It would even reduce the number of H-1B highly skilled worker visas. Ask your doctor, if you've got a doctor who's not from America, what kind of visa they're on. It's probably an H-1B. It would significantly lim limit the number of T and U visas. You probably don't know what those are, but they're the visas that are given to victims of human trafficking, violence, and abuse. Human trafficking, violence, and abuse. We're targeting them, too. Let's remember the context here. Trump and the Republican Party have for a decade now made the amorphous threat of immigrants a central rallying point. Trump constantly accuses Democrats of having reckless, dangerous open border policies, which led in immigrants, which Trump calls vermin, who in Trump's words, poison the blood of our country. But remember, Donald Trump loyalists in Congress killed the modern era's strongest effort at border control. 
Project 2025's immigration proposals are not going to fix anything at all. It simply lays out all these plans to reduce legal and illegal pathways into the United States to slow down our already in, uh, incredibly backlogged immigration system, to weaponize every branch of the government, to round up millions of people, some of whom have been here for most of their lives and who collectively we rely upon for our economic growth and in many of our most critical industries. Let's be really clear. Project 2025's immigration policies aren't even trying to fix anything. They break what is already a broken system by using ta tactics that are punctuated by cruelty. But that's the point. When the rhetorical strategy of fear-mongering over a broken system has worked for you, fixing the problem is not going to be your objective. Cruelty, when it comes to immigration, is the point. Cruelty has always been the point.